Chai Lin, and in this video, you're going to see the process of how I made this dress. So this is the pattern for Simplicity 5968. It is a pattern from 1973, so this is a vintage pattern, and I have the size 14. As you can see here, the size 14 is a 36 bust, 28 waist, and 38 hips. Now, this is a problem for me because in my measurements, 42, 32, 42, I would be a size 20 bust and a size 18 waist and hips. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you the first couple steps that I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually measure out the pattern pieces first before I do anything else. And that's because pattern companies like Simplicity, Vogue, McCall, and Butterick do what's called a wearable ease. Ease is basically just another way of saying that the pattern has a couple inches, usually between two to four inches, of extra for you to be able to breathe, move around, etc. Now in my experiences, and from what I've read online as well, these pattern companies tend to do about a 3 to 4 inch difference in wearable ease. And that's a pretty large difference. Alright, so after measuring out the pattern pieces, the size 14 ended up being a 40, 32, 42. So it was basically two sizes bigger in terms of the finish measurements once everything was measured out. So what I'm going to do is, since I already fit the 3242 of the waist and hips, I'm going to do what's called a full bust adjustment and make the bodice piece two inches bigger so it fits my bust. Alright, so we are doing our first fitting of the mock-up with the full bust adjustment that I did. As you can see, the full bust adjustment did fix the bodice, it does fit me. However, the shoulders are a little too long right here. So I'm going to cut it short about, let's see, that looks like an inch and a half. And then that's where my shoulder actually ends. So I'm going to make that hole a little bit bigger. Also, if you look, the back is longer than the front. That is partly because it does have a curve, like in the pattern. It does curve at the waist right here. But basically what's happening is my back is curved significantly. And so with the pattern having the waistline and the skirt and this going past my waistline in the back right here, I need to cut that short. So it's... I already have it marked, it's gonna go right here is where it should end, and I'm gonna adjust that on the pattern.
I'm going to admit right now that I don't pay attention to the directions. I usually just start sewing because I don't, directions usually aren't that in depth. I don't like looking at the directions. I kind of get the gist of how pieces are put together. It's just how I started when I first started learning how to sew. I took the things apart and then put them back together. While I was doing the facing, I noticed that it was going to be really strange having to flip the facing over with a zipper on the back and a collar. I didn't know how it wanted me to have a zipper with a collar on the back, etc. So I, I went back and I looked at this and I add the zipper on this step, or I should. And then I do all the other facing pieces and then I add the collar. And I'm like, why do I add the collar next? Well, in this pattern, I'm actually doing thread loops for the collar pieces. I don't like that. I don't like that the collar will have to be um, basically looped or buttoned together at the end and then zipped. So there's going to be a zipper and then you're going to put the collar pieces together. So what I'm going to do instead is put the collar piece on and then put the zipper on the side. That's what I normally do for all of my dresses. So that's what I'm going to do here. The facing needs to be in one piece instead of two separate pieces. So now that I've done that, I can put the facing on properly, right sides together like this. And then I'm going to flip it over once it's basted together. And then the collar is going to basically cover up the seams. So hopefully I've learned my lesson, follow the directions, Shailin. Follow the directions. Maybe next time you don't have to seam rip and take apart your dress. This is what it looks like with the collar completed and the faux lapel going on right here at the bust area. Um, I believe this is a pretty decent fit. Ooh. I did clip it on the sides, that's where the zipper will go. Like I said, it goes on the left side of the dress, traditionally. Um, I think the only thing that I would do next time is maybe have a little bit more room in the waist area. I think it's a little bit more fitted than I'd like personally. So I am almost done with the dress. I have the collar done. Like I said earlier, I have one sleeve put on and then I already put the zipper on the left side of the dress. Now I explained to you that the pattern itself said to put the zipper on the back, then there will be a clasp on the collar. So I'm just doing what I always do with the zipper on the side by attaching an invisible zipper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the sleeve all the way around and keep this closed and that is what I'll be catching when I insert the sleeve. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how I made this dress and messed up and 
sort of fixed it. Hopefully you guys stick around and subscribe to my channel for more vintage and vintage inspired makes.